Howdy, everybody. Welcome back to Ireland Down. Yes, I know it's been a little bit, but I was wanting to wait on this one because of two reasons. <laughs> uh, one is because I knew that we had 4th of July coming up, and I wanted to do a special one for 4th of July. And the second reason that I wanted to wait was because, well, the special one that I was doing, it took a little bit of research and some things I had to look into. Now, um, I'm, there's some things I'm going to be reading that when it reads, it's going to read one way, but it's actually going to be another. Um, I know, what am I talking about? <laughs> um, I was, I had done a little bit of research. One of the things I looked at that it kind of, kind of got me excited was this person I was looking at made it seem like he was my five times great grandfather. In fact, that's almost like what the thing said when I was reading it. But when I started reading the historical accounts of the person, come to find out he wasn't my five times great grandfather. I'm still related to him. It's just that it's not direct line. It's uh, coming over here to one of my grand, 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 grandparents siblings. <laughs> but uh, anyways, I will discuss that a little bit more in the video. I just, right now, I wanted to actually say it out loud uh, ahead of time so that that way it won't come as a surprise to people whenever they read it uh, or whenever we see it. So that, that way um, you kind of understand a little bit more and you're a little bit prepared for, for what you see. I'm, I'm going to read it as it is. As I always do, I'll probably make a few comments. But uh, I just, I wanted y'all to know ahead of time. Uh, so, why don't I stop talking and start talking in the other part of the video. So, we'll, we'll go to that in just a second. I was going to come back and I was going to show you some relatives here. Uh, and going back to basically the Revolutionary War, which was the war where America fought for their independence. Now, of course, we see my dad here, Lloyd W. Garrett, and, of course, in the picture there, he's wearing his uh, uniform from the Navy in World War II, his, his sailor outfit. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to go up through his dad's side of the family on this, and his dad, of course, Luther Garrett, Luther's father was William H. Garrett. Okay, and then William H. Garrett, his father was a gentleman named Milton J. Garrett. Okay, so I, um, there was one day that I had gotten a notification on Milton. Um, was it Milton or was it Eli? Uh-oh. <laughs> Give me a second. Let me look here. No. Yeah, I guess I guess it was Milton. Um so anyways, uh, it says Garrett's in history of Rosales, Tennessee. Uh, this, like I said, this was where I had first gotten it, gotten the, uh, the notifications, you know, and of course reading through about the, the family. Uh, this information was supposed to be from three grandsons of Thomas Washington Garrett, which, um, he was like, you know, the next generation up, uh, see, grandsons of Thomas Washington Garrett, they were Holt and Herbert Garrett, and John Milton Kimmins. Now, the, uh, of course, this, this right here, it's part of basically the family history. Uh, Garrett family originally came from Lancaster, Shire, England, settled near Philadelphia. So uh, this, is, this is way back before you know, America became America. So the, uh, they settled near Philadelphia, not, probably a small, nice town at that time. It says, later, a branch of this family moved to Bards, Bardstown, Kentucky. Two children of this family, Eli and a brother, were captured by the Indians. Eli escaped with the Indians in hot pursuit and hid in a pile of brush. At intervals, he would ease his head out to watch the Indians 
but remained hidden so very long that the Indians decided he had been drowned in the Ohio River. When the Indians went away, Eli came out, boarded a boat on the river, and uh, reached home. The fate of his brother is not known. And it says, Eli Garrett married Agatha Nash. Okay, now, if, if you looked back to actually, you know what, I am going to step out of this story because I want to go, you know, the, this is, like I said, Milton here. Um, this was his parents. See, e, uh, Morris, Eli, Garrett, and Agatha Nash. I'm actually going to pick it up here uh, again in Agatha's side. Uh, go in here. Yes, I know. Um, marriage certificate. Okay, I thought it was in here. I think it's this one. Yes, it's this one. Here we go. Um, anyways, uh, Faith's brother is not known. Eli Garrett married Agatha Nash. Now, that, that's who I'm on right now is Agatha. You know, uh, in the vicinity of Nashville, Tennessee, a sister of William Nash, their father was a son of General Francis Nash of Revolutionary War fame. Nashville, Tennessee was named in honor of General Nash. William Nash was a surveyor who, with Colonel Robert Weekly, laid out and surveyed Rutherford County. Okay, so I, I was sitting there, honestly, I started getting excited because I read this, and it was like, oh my word, are you kidding me? You know, uh, I, I was thinking, I'm, I'm related to the guy that Nashville, Tennessee is, you know, named after. Well, apparently this and historical records do not add up. Apparently, there is a discrepancy. Uh, so, I am going to pull out of this. And we are going, and by the way, John Nash and Margaret Cloyd, uh, they are Agatha's parents. You know, that that's who her mom and dad were, was John and Margaret. And, well, we'll come back to that one here in just a moment. So let me, oh, come on. There we go. Um, let me see if I can get this pulled up. Sometimes this doesn't want to work like it should. Okay, and I, I know it says Brigadier, but it's supposed to be Brigadier General. Uh, for some reason, <laughs> for some reason, my, my speaker didn't work right. But it is Brigadier, not Brigadier. Okay, so this is not a freaking uh, general here. This is a brigadier general. So we're going to go into Wikipedia, and we're going to read a little bit about this man. Or see what, what we can find out. It says, Francis Nash, about, when they have a C on there, that means about. He was born about 1742, and he died October the 7th. 1777. He was a brigadier general in the Continental Army during the American Revolutionary War. It says prior to the war, he was a lawyer, public official, and politician in Hillsborough, North Carolina, and was heavily involved in opposing of re uh, regulatory movements. It says an uprising of settlers in the North Carolina Piedmont between 1765 and 1771. So he, uh, he'd already had some military experience with a previous thing that had happened. It says Nash was also involved in North Carolina politics, representing Hillsboro on several occasions in the colonial North Carolina General Assembly. So, um... You know, a lot of this just goes that into who he was, you know, how he received his rank and stuff. Um, let's see. It says, uh, Nash quickly became engaged in revolutionary activities and served as a delegate to the first three 
patriot prov provincial congresses. So he, he was involved in some of the, the first government stuff that was done. It says in 1775, he was named Lieutenant Colonel of the 1st North Carolina Regiment under Colonel James Moore. So, uh, you know, he was a lieutenant colonel, so he was like, you know, one step below uh, a colonel there. It says he served briefly in the Southern Theater of the Revolutionary War before being ordered north. It says Nash was made a brigadier general in 1777. Uh, upon Moore's death and given command of the North Carolina Brigade of the Continental Army under General George Washington. So that meant that he probably had a lot of participation with, you know, George Washington. Got to, to talk to him and, and, you know, of course, with, uh, with George Washington being in command of the troops, you know, the ultimate commander... You know, he probably had a lot of generals underneath him that he talked to. So, you know, one of my relatives actually knew George Washington. Wasn't related to him, apparently, but knew him. It says he led North Carolina soldiers in the Philadelphia campaign, but was wounded at the Battle of Germantown on October the 4th, 1777, and died several days later. It says Nash was one of ten Patriot generals to die from wounds received in combat between 1775 and 1781. So, you know, someone was really aiming for the generals, it sounds like. It says he is honored by several cities and country names, including those of Nashville, Tennessee, Nashville, North Carolina, and Nash County, North Carolina. Okay, now, I don't know a whole lot about North Carolina, but who, who, would, who would want to bet that probably Nashville, North Carolina, sits in the county of Nash, also in North Carolina? You know, I mean, just, just wondering who else thinks that, you know, whether it's just me. So, uh, where is he buried at? Well, back then they weren't able to ship people back home like they do now. They usually need to bury them within a few days because they didn't have any ways to preserve the bodies. So they buried him in Pennsylvania. Uh, he is at the, I'm going to try not to, to butcher this, this word too badly here, the Towa Menison Mennonite Meeting House Cemetery. <laughs> I hope I got that right. So anyways, that, that's where he is buried. Of course, he was uh, had some, some things to do with the Continental Congress because of the fact that, you know, he was pretty high-ranking. He was, of course, in the Army and received, received the Brigadier General rank. Uh, so, like I said, he was apparently a pretty good military leader, just didn't know when to duck. Um, <laughs> so, early life and family. Now, th this is where uh, I started running into things here. Uh, it says, Nash was born around 1742 in Amelia County, Virginia, in an area that would later become Prince uh, Edward County. To John and Ann Owen Nash. It says his parents were originally from Wells, and several of his seven siblings, including at least one brother, were born there. One of Nash's brothers was Abner Nash, who later became a statesman in North Carolina. Now, um, you remember the two that uh, showed down there? There was uh, Milton Garrett. He was married to a woman named Skiota Holden. Um, now, the Skiota was also a Nash. She was, I almost hate to say this, but uh, <laughs> she, she was uh, like um, her and Milton. They were like second cousins, something like that. So um, 
I've got I've got basically the same family coming back down into two cousins that married. So uh, I know I've seen Abner Nash in uh, one of my other uh, lines, but uh, he he is I think he is a grandfather through Skioda if I if I remember what I saw. So he is one of my relatives. He's just not uh, he's not his brother basically. So there's uh, at least one other brother, because um, it says including at least one brother. So other than Francis and Abner, you know, there is another brother. So uh, there's there was three of them, and well, let me just come down here, and it will make things a little bit uh, more understandable. Uh, we're going to go past this one here where it starts out by 1783 because that just talks about what he did. And if if y'all can hear that in the background, that's one of my cats acting up. Uh, we're going to come down here to where it shows in 1770. It says, in 1770, Nash married Sarah Moore, the daughter of colonial jurist Morris Moore, the niece of James Moore and sister of future United States Supreme Court Justice Alfred Moore. Uh, so uh, I, I had uncles sitting on the state Supreme Court Justice. Uh, so like I said, got some important people in my past here. It says the union produced two daughters. Okay, now remember, let's go back here and let's review. We've been talking about Francis Nash one that Nashville, Tennessee is named after. So this is Francis Nash, and he uh, married this uh, Sarah Moore. They had two daughters, Anne, who died as a child, and Sarah, who went on to marry a man named John Waddle. Okay, now remember, they got married in 1770. He died in 1777. There's not a whole lot of time there for uh, producing a lot of children. But we're going to go down a little bit further here. So, uh, anyways, uh, Sarah married John Waddle, the son of North Carolina colonial soldier Hugh Waddle. Sarah was the grandmother to American Civil War Confederate blockade runner James Iredell Waddell. <laughs> yes, I know. That's a lot of Dells there, isn't it? Uh, so, uh, at, we had a blockade runner in the family. <laughs> I find that one kind of funny, but still. Uh, Francis Nash says, had two children out of wedlock. Okay, uh, which means basically he had a girlfriend that he got a little um, frisky with one night. It says, one of whom... Some scholars identify as a son, also named Francis Nash, possibly born in 1770 or 1771. So, uh, there you have it. He had at least one illegitimate son, but the timing is not right for him to be my grandfather. The, the dates didn't add up right. So, you know, e even if I did try to claim Francis Nash, it wouldn't work because uh, it's like, it, basically I would have had, uh, it's like my grandparents would have had to have been like 14, 15 years old when, when everybody was born. That had to have happened for like a couple of generations. So, uh, no, he is not... My, in my grandfather line. Uh, he is a grand uncle, but he is not a grandfather of mine. Uh, so that kind of ended my short thought of being a Nash of the Nashvilles. Uh, at least I'm not that particular one. I'm just uh, one of his nieces. But still, you know, he served with honor. He was well thought of, and I just, I got to look here for a moment at this house. That house is great, isn't it? 
That's his home in Hillsboro, North Carolina. It's known as the Nash Hopper House. Probably one of the later people who, who took it over at some point was named Hopper. Uh, that seems to be a lot of times how they do things like that. So uh, let's pull out. There's um, come down here a little bit further because there's a, a few other things that I had found. Um, it says Francis Nash. Patriot General in American Revolutionary uh, War, uh, mortally wounded at Germantown, 1777. His home is 150 yards west. So that that's like, a, I guess, an early day uh, historical marker showing where his house was, you know, so that way people would know. Um, come down here, see if See, there was this one here. Um, give me a second because this is a little hard to do. It says, uh, in the cemetery of the church across the road is buried Francis Nash, Brigadier General in command of the nine regiments of North Carolina troops. He was mortally wounded in the Battle of Germantown, October the 4th, 1777, at the Chew House. He died October, this one says October the 9th, and some of them were saying October the 7th. So, it was October of 1777 at the Markley Farm, one and a half miles south. So, this was erected by the North Carolina Society, uh, Daughters of the American Revolution. So, uh, that just, let's see if I can get that, there we go, get that to close out there. Uh, so, I mean, there, there is markers, there's things. Now, this one here, I have been led to believe, is a picture of Francis Nash. Um, you know, I, I can't read everything at the bottom. I don't know exactly what that is. But from everything that I have gathered and that I have seen, this is supposed to be my grand uncle. So that's a, a drawing of him, a sketch. Um, I'm not, he, he's got the Garrett hairline. <laughs> I almost hate to say it that way. Uh, my, my dad had a receding hairline. <laughs> In fact, it receded so far back that I called it his broken halo. <laughs> but uh, you can see he, uh, he looked like a, a very nice gentleman there. Uh, I don't I don't remember seeing that nose on any of my current family members. Uh, but still, you know, like I said, he was an uncle, so he wasn't direct line. But, uh, yeah, that's that's some things about him there. Um, you know, uh, see, what happened, of course, I have read this, so I'm going to go ahead and, and pull this up here. What happened to General Francis Nash? at the Battle of Germantown in October 1777. Um, it says, October the 4th, 1777, Francis Nash, Brigadier General of the North Carolina Continental Troops under General George Washington in the American Revolution, was mortally wounded by a cannonball. Ouch. Oh. I've, I've read it, but that still hurts every time I think about that. I mean, I've gotten hit in the stomach before, like, by something, uh, like a ball, not a cannonball, but like a rubber ball hit me. I can imagine how bad that would hurt. That was at the Battle of Germantown near Philadelphia. And so, uh, and what's funny was, uh, this was put up on the anniversary when it happened because... See here at the end it says October 4th, 2016. So someone put that up after or on the anniversary of basically uh, him getting wounded. So, uh, yeah, that's that hurts. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's it's a wonder that he even lived, see, four, five, six, seven, three days to, to five days, three to five days depending on which one you want to, to believe is his death date. You know, that's that's a long time to live with that pain. Um, so, 
we know he didn't die instantly, which means that he was probably in a lot of pain for those few days. But yeah, that everything after that is just, you know, a rehashing of everything that I have just told you, everything that we talked about. But yeah, that, that apparently is one of my grand uncles. All right, so there we are. There it is all laid out. A um, lot of uh, interesting stuff there. And, well, <laughs> it's, it's nice to know that so many of my family from back then were such good and, and honorable pr people and living in an exceptionally hard time. Um, you know, just I thought... The 4th of July was a good time to talk about this relative. Of course, I've been laying a little bit of the groundwork, you know, by, you know, introducing parts of this family since I've been talking about my mom's side and I'm now kind of switching and doing a little bit more on my dad's side. But um, I was talking with a friend we got talking about research and the fact that sometimes you got to follow the lines, you know, when they lay themselves out and open and you can actually get some, some clear access to them. Uh, sometimes other lines, you have to do a little bit more research to make sure your information is right. Uh, like I kind of discovered, you know, like uh, when I went through and I saw that and it was saying, you know, that, that General Francis Nash was, you know, like I said, one of my, my ancestral grandfathers and then, like, you know, when I started looking and realized, no, he's not. He's not an ancestral grandfather. You know, I mean, the dates weren't adding up. I mean, that that's why you can't just go by what some people say. You really, really, really need to look into it. You know, the person I've understood wrong, uh, you know, maybe one of those grandsons that they talked to, didn't get it right himself you know he might have misunderstood something even though he would have been closer to the generation you know the, that lived that but you gotta go with what you gotta go with right so uh anyways uh <laughs> i have i have been doing a lot of research uh even though i don't put a lot of it up i have been doing quite a bit and some of the things i'm finding out it's just like I said, uh, I was kind of excited about the whole Nash thing. And then when it kind of went sideways, you know, I was a little bit disappointed. You know, I was a little bit upset, but a thought came to me. And it was the fact that this is still a relative. You know, I mean, th this was a relative that had achieved a very, very, good rank <laughs> you know being a brigadier general that's that's pretty high you know i mean they don't just hand those out to everybody you know i mean you, you might have like 500 buck privates you know and then one general so uh you know the fact that they thought enough of him you know to make him a general like i said even though as i have now discovered he's not a grandfather but a grand uncle you know, I'm, I'm still proud of him. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm still proud of him and the man he was and and the fact that he served his country so willingly and that he was one of them that wanted to make our country a better place. You know, he was one of them that, that bravely said, yeah, let, let's do this. Let's fight the British. Let's make America a free nation. And as so many people did, he died for it. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, I had, yeah, part of me was a little bit stunned at how many of the Nash relatives there were that were in the military. And most all of them were like majors, colonels, and of course, you know, Francis, who is a brigadier general. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so, um, you know, even though I no longer am a part of, of the Nashville legacy in a way I am because I'm a niece. <laughs> you know, even though I might not be a grandchild of his, I am still a niece 
and I still I still feel a little bit of connection to Nashville. I still feel that you know I'm I'm connected in that way because of the fact that you can't change the blood. You know, you you can't you can say, Oh yeah, no, no, he's not a relative. No, 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 I don't know him. But the blood still tells out. You know, you're you're still related one way or another. So anyways, um you know, got a few pictures in there. Uh, some pictures of the house, picture of what I have been led to believe is Journal Nash. You know, if you if you like the story, you know, leave a comment. Let's talk about it. You know, uh, you you got someone famous in your family. You got someone that is well known. Uh, <laughs> how how far back do you know your roots? You know, I mean, it's it's a little bit addictive. You know, you get into it because you find a little bit, you want to find a little bit more, and you want to find a little bit more. Um, I saw someone on uh, on one of my Facebook pages. I have a ancestry link on one of my Facebook pages, and uh, this woman was talking about she had gone back to her twentieth, like great grandfather. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm just barely at seven. <laughs> You know, I just, I, I just barely kind of hit the edge there with seven. You know, and I'm like, I'm thinking, holy cow, you know, 20? And of course, when you take into account the fact that every generation, the grandparent lineage doubles. <laughs> you know, it doubles, the doubles again, because it takes two to make one child. So you have the mother and the father. Well... This mother, she has two. And this father, he has two. So all of a sudden, you've got four now. Okay. So, you know, like I said, these two are part of the four. Okay. This one has two. This one has two. This one has two. This one has two. That four is now eight. You know, and of course, you double eight, and that's um, 16. 16 doubled is 32. 32 doubled is like 64, and I think that's like at the, the fifth. I think that's hit the fifth, fourth level. Uh, let's see. Um, when when both my parents, that'd be the first generation out. Their parents, second, third. Okay. <laughs> I'm horrible at math. I'm horrible at math. Let's take a faster and easier way at this, shall we? Okay, uh, doubling. So half of 64 was 32. No, that doesn't work. <laughs> oh, that doesn't work. Uh, math, math is not my strong suit. <laughs> Stories, pictures, that's my strong suit. I'm trying to figure up math. No, don't do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm not not any good with it. Uh, so, um, anyways, it, if if someone can give the answer, <laughs> if so, if, if someone knows how far out the 64th is, you know, when you have like 64 grandparents wide, uh, you feel free to let me know. <laughs> feel free to let me know because, like I said, I I am not good at math at all. <laughs> But anyways, um, I hope y'all have enjoyed this somewhat. I hope you've gotten something out of it. And, you know, from ancest my ancestry going back to the Revolutionary War that started America, that officially gave us the 4th of July for us to celebrate like we do, from all of my relatives back then to now, I thank everyone. I thank everyone who has fought over the years to maintain it. You know, there was, uh, of course, the Revolutionary War. There's the War of 1812. Uh, there was the Civil War. There was the Spanish-American War, World War One, World War Two, Korea, Vietnam, um, Desert Storm. Uh, what what do I don't know officially what they've called this last one. Um, you know, I mean, it, it's it's kind of one of those things, you know, I mean, Desert Storm. Uh, 
that one happened so fast. <laughs> it was over and it's like, oh yeah, that was Operation Desert Shield and now it's like Desert Storm and I mean that that one happened so fast and this one, you know, the war on terrorism but is about the best I can remember with it. But I mean, like I said, we there's a lot of people that have served in fact in this direct line from the Nashes down, even my one of my nephews is serving right now. You know, so, I mean, like I said, we have a very long and a very proud, you know, list of relatives who have served. We've served, I think I, uh, I have seen someone who has served in each of those wars. Well, not World War I. Um, I think that's the only one that we missed, um, unless there's a relative that I find somewhere that served in World War I. Uh, which I don't know who it would be. Uh, I think all my, my grandparents that were of that age, I think they were at the wrong age at some point for that. You know, and they, none of them served. But uh, for the most part, all those wars, you know, my family has had someone who has served. Even in peacetime, you know, there's been someone who has been in the military. You know, uh, so, sometimes it feels like true lines went out, you know, um, and everyone that I can think of, they've served with honor and none of them have been dishonorably discharged. They have, they are either still serving or they left in good standing with the military. So, I mean, like I said, that's, that's something to be very proud of. And I'm, I'm glad to say that my family can say that. Going back to our official first war, you know, the, like I said, the one that made us a nation. So, uh, anyways, I hope everybody has a great 4th of July. If y'all are going out somewhere to see some fireworks, uh, I hope that y'all have a great time, that y'all enjoy the fireworks. If you decide to shoot them off yourself, please be careful. <laughs> please everybody be careful I, I, I don't want I don't want someone uh, popping up on my my feed there you know it's like oh hey Jennifer how you doing you know and, and they don't have any fingers left <laughs> you know uh, please you know like I said be careful um, if you're just going to go out and enjoy the day enjoy the time at the lake one of the rivers you know I hope you have a great time and be safe you know if you decide to stay home you know, great, wonderful, enjoy your time. You know, the 4th of July is not like one of those things like Christmas where you have to go to a relative's house. I mean, you, it's about freedom and freedom to be where you want to do what you want. So please be free to, to have the fun you want where you want. And I hope to hear from some of y'all, you know, let me know how your, your 4th of July went. You know, to, uh, if you had a great day, if you saw fireworks, wherever you saw fireworks, you know, feel free to tell me. So, uh, and for those who haven't, which I know that there's probably some who are watching who haven't, you remember that little red subscribe button? Please feel free to hit it. And uh, the bell notification should automatically go to all, so that, that way you don't have to do it. You know, thumbs up. You know, I, I like those thumbs up. You know, they, it lets me know that someone has seen it and that they have enjoyed it. You know, uh, also to YouTube, it lets them know that you enjoyed it. Um, thumbs up. Uh, also to, you know, like I said, you know, leave a comment. Let's talk about things. Let's talk about 4th of July. Let's talk about service. You know, if you got someone serving, feel free to give them a shout out. You know, uh my grandfather served in World War II. My dad served in Vietnam. My uncle served in Korea. You know, let me know where your family has served. I, I would be happy to know. And, uh, you know, a few of mine who have served now. And also, too, you know, share it out. You know, I mean, it's something that someone might find interesting or they might go, hey, wait a minute. You know, I think I'm related to some of those people. You know, if they are, you know, we might be distant cousins. I would love to talk to you. <laughs> you know, I would love to find out where some of the other members of the family have been and what they've been doing. 
So anyways, until then, like I said, subscribe, like, comment, and share, and I will talk to y'all later. Bye-bye.